I'd like to introduce our panel to you. So we have Adam Smith, Head of News for BBC Northern Ireland. Professor Anne-Marie Gray joins us today, Professor of Social Policy in the School of Criminology, Politics and Social Policy and Policy Director of the ARC Project at Ulster University. We also have Professor Siobhan O'Neill. We're delighted to say Siobhan's here, Professor of Mental Health Services at UU. Dr Fiona Bloomer, Lecturer in School of Criminology, Politics and Social Policy at Ulster University. And last but not least, uh, Richard Johnson, Deputy Director in Economic Policy uh, Centre here at UU. We've got a room full of incredible academics here with great research and they want to know how do they get on the airwaves, how do they make a difference, how do they prove impact. What advice would you say? Uh, we like research that tells us something we did not know about our society. So the first thing is, have you, have you really got a story? Have you got something new? That's really, really important. If you can't explain what that new thing is in one sentence, it's highly unlikely that my audiences are going to understand what that new thing is. Now, I'm not saying that you need to dumb down or be superficial. What I'm saying is that you have to be able to communicate in such a way that complex information that you have can be made understandable to the vast majority of people. And perhaps you've heard something on our airwaves and you think, you know, that is not the full story. It is absolutely okay to pick up the phone and speak to a journalist about that or speak to a program producer about that. I was involved in a, in a research study that revealed some quite important findings and I really enjoy doing this sort of work. So um, whenever the group were approached to, to comment on the research and what we found about the troubles in Northern Ireland and trauma and things like that, I was happy to, to put myself forward and take a few risks and do that. But I mean, it's not for everybody. Not every academic can and should do this. If you can manage Twitter, um, uh, really well, then you can use that to connect with journalists, with people who are commenting in the media, and you can get really important messages out there. Mm -hmm. But it's a minefield, it really, really is. Part of the process of changing policy can be changing public opinion, mm -hmm. and part of the process of changing public opinion is engaging with the public through the media. For us in ARC, that was part of our founding mission, was to take what can be quite complex academic research sometimes and to produce that, including statistical research, um, in very lay-friendly publications. And actually, our biggest users for those publications are the civil servants. Wow. Okay. Uh, because they don't have time to read your 200-page book or your 30-page journal article. They want your four-page research update or your six-page policy brief. So I think through those research updates and policy briefs, we get to a very wide audience, You know, school kids who are doing projects, journalists, um, Civil, civil servants, permanent secretary, select committees. There's a more recent example is Fiona's work and our work in ARC on abortion, yes. where there are clear examples of certainly influence public debate, influencing debate at Westminster, um, you know, what MP, MPs have been citing the work, both of ARC and Fiona's work in the House of Commons. Yeah. With the main activist group in Northern Ireland, Alliance for Choice, they use my research for their campaigning and for community education programmes as well. And it was through them that they, they introduced me then to trade union um, activists who wanted to do research on abortion as a workplace issue. Um, that led to me being commissioned to lead a team. It was the first ever study in the world of abortion as a workplace issue. And the findings for that were then used as part of the campaign to repeal the Eighth Amendment. In terms of impact, it really is about knowing you have different audiences. You're going to have to work out what is relevant and interesting and timely to the audience that you're trying to engage. So if it's civil servants or it's policymakers, you need to be very fast in terms of reacting to what their needs are. Okay? So you need to be on the ball in terms of identifying what their needs are. Also, appreciate that they're busy. They genuinely don't have the time, but you're going to have to distill the three or four or five key messages from your research that you want them to get. You know, my job and the BBC's job is not to influence public policy. Oh. In a society which is very soundbite oriented, it can be very, very difficult to ensure that you get the time and the space and the depth in subject matter to really assess what's going on. The era of adversarial and confrontational debate is over. What I have set myself as a target to do is to look at how we can create more opportunity for depth, more understanding in a world that is 
increasingly more complex. Identifying the stakeholders and working with them and getting the message out in a way that it actually hits those stakeholders. So that's how I use the media. Well, the difficulty is most of the policies are informed by evidence, but what, what the policymakers often do is they'll Google and they'll get a report, whereas you'll want them to refer directly to your research. And this is where the policy and practice briefings come in, because you present them with a briefing that gives them the things that they cite. And then you've got to actually call somebody and call a researcher and say, I know you're developing this. We'd be really grateful if you could actually cite our research in there. Um, we think evidence is the thing, the most important thing. And for policymakers, evidence is not always the most important thing. So they have a lot of other com competing things that they have to take into account. So there's ideology, there's public pressure, pressure groups and so on. You have to be quite thick-skinned working with, with policymakers because sometimes it can be quite resistant to your research if it doesn't fit into a particular agenda and so on, and that's fine. We don't have Northern Ireland Assembly at the minute, right. and so um, I've had to shift my attention to Westminster then in terms of potential um, influence on policy. We identified three key things that generally Westminster needed to hear about abortion in Northern Ireland and we designed our briefing paper around that. Uh, we had an SNP MP who we knew was supportive but was being very non-committal about actually for instance sponsoring an event at Westminster. I did a two minute pitch to her at the end of the event and she said okay what can I do to help you and I said well can you book us a room at Westminster so that we can hold an event and wow. she agreed and we held the event six weeks later. You need to be quite strategic in terms of who you're targeting within government, within the political parties or councils or Westminster. You do, you do need to engage at all levels with the policymakers in terms of actually getting traction, um, get your point across and then help them to build a case. Don't be too adversarial. Look at the issue, identify three or four solutions or whatever options might work. Try and cost them out because the other side of it is um, all of those policymakers are working within a budget. Civil servants aren't just dealing with evidence here, they're dealing with all sorts of things in terms of getting their, their job done. Um, and also at certain points in time it's about bringing in experts to help. So a project I was working on with the Open University, about it was a public engagement project and we wanted to, to bring to the public all the different reasons why a woman might need an abortion and we pulled together uh, six different projects and we brought in a design agency and they actually designed for us a pop-up shop. So you walked into the space, it looked like a shop. We had clothes rails, each item of clothing had a quote on it from a woman's story, and the care label had her full story. So I think it's at certain times taking a step back and going, I know everything there is to know about abortion policy in Northern Ireland, but I'm not an expert in actually necessarily communicating that with the general public. And it's a, you know, partnership work in this case. I think it should be part of your workload. It's part of my workload. And I think that's a really important point to make. If you've got an impact case study, this is going to generate income for the university. So you need to go to your line manager and say, right, this is the impact I'm, I'm going to achieve. It looks likely that I'm going to be able to do this. Now I need a bit of space to do it. We are people who are motivated by stories and by narrative. If you have a case study that can provide that narrative, that can provide that story, it will land in a way that the abstract won't. So to go back to the science and technology, you need, you need to show people why they should care most of the time.